Utah's legislative session comes to an end. Hello to you and thank you for being with us tonight. I'm Brian McElhatton. 555 of the 591 bills passed this session signed into law now. Governor Cox also issued his first vetoes of the session and is nixing seven bills. ABC4's Cade Gardner is live on Capitol Hill for us. And Cade, what are those bills and why did the governor make that decision? Yeah, Brian, well, like you were saying, the governor is vetoing seven bills in total. Now, there are actually a few reasons for that, but one of the biggest is he says he believes that Utah lawmakers are passing way too many bills increasingly every year. I don't know that our state needed 591 to remain functional after what I thought was a pretty good year before. 591 bills passed in 45 days, beating the record of 575 set just last year. Governor Spencer Cox says one type of bill he's vetoing asks state agencies to do something they already do or would be willing to do. Bills that, uh, that, that easily could have been uh, implemented with just a phone call. It doesn't need to be a bill. For example, House Bill 239 would require the Division of Technology Services to create a yearly cybersecurity training course that all state executive branch employees would have to take. In response to the veto, bill sponsor Representative Carl Albrecht tells ABC4, it's not a big deal. If it can be worked out by the executive branch and the DTS division, the results will be the same. Then there's House Bill 152, which would require the Division of Professional Licensing to provide one or more sample contracts for use in both new residential construction and residential remodels. In response to the veto, bill sponsor Representative Nelson Abbott tells ABC4, at no time has the Cox administration or DOPL offered to do this contract without a bill. To be sure, if the Cox administration or DOPL had been willing to move forward without legislation, the contract would have easily been finished by now and available to the public. Governor Cox says there's another type of bill he's vetoing. There are just several bills that uh, maybe started out as, uh, as, as something substantive, but then they didn't have the support, so they removed the substantive pieces, and we end up with something that's doesn't do anything. For example, Senate Bill 190 would require the political subdivisions interim committee to study issues relating to a university's development of a university's owned property. In response to the veto, bill sponsor Senator Chris Wilson tells ABC4, I'm committed to working with the governor's office and stakeholders to find a solution that enables universities to offset the escalating costs associated with NCAA requirements while still sustaining essential university needs. In response to all vetoes, House Speaker Representative Mike Schultz says, I respect the policymaking process and appreciate the governor's collaboration and commitment to working with us to tackle some of the most important and pressing issues facing our state. Okay, so when Governor Cox released his list of those seven bills that he's vetoing, he also highlighted two others. He's not going to be signing them, but that means tonight at midnight they will go into law automatically. And he's not vetoing them. They probably would have been vetoed. But he says the broad acceptance and the broad support it had in the legislature made him decide to just let them automatically pass into law. Reporting live in Salt Lake City, Kate Garner, ABC4 News.